Hi friends, welcome to Easy Learning Economics. I am Dr. Kaval. In the previous lectures, we determined the profit maximizing output using the total revenue function and the demand function and marginal cost function. And also we determined the profit maximizing output by using the demand equation and average cost function. So in this lecture, we are going to determine the profit maximizing level of output using the total revenue and total cost function. If you want to know that how to find the profit maximizing output using the marginal cost function, using average cost function, using demand equation and the marginal cost function, the links are given in the descriptions you can watch. This is the total revenue function and total cost function. The total revenue function stands as 45Q minus 0.5Q square total cost function that is q cube minus 8q square plus 57q plus 2 so total revenue and total cost functions are given we have to find the profit maximizing output before to find the profit maximizing output we have to find the profit function as we know that the profit function is equals to total revenue minus total cost so we can rewrite this equation like that the pi is equal to TR minus TC. Pi indicates profit, TR represents the total revenue whereas the TC represents the total cost. Here we have replaced this TR by putting the total revenue equation and the TC by putting the total cost equation. So this is the profit function we derived using the total revenue and total cost function. Using the derivative rules, find the derivative of the profit function. This is the first derivative of the profit function the derivative equal to 0 to find the quantity so using this derivative and keeping it equal to 0 you can see that the three factors are here so we are making the factors of the 15 q and breaking it into the factors like 12 q plus 3 q we are taking the common from this 3 q square plus 12 q so th minus 3 q is a common and plus 3 is a common from the 3 q minus 12 so so after solving it the quantity is equals to 1 and Four. So, which quantity assures the maximum profit? The derivation of profit function shows the slope of function. First derivative slope is 0. Find the change in the slope of function, we have to perform the second derivation. The second derivation will determine whether we have a maximum or minimum profit at the point where the first derivative is 0. This is the first derivation we did and now this is the second derivation of this profit function. So, we can represent the second derivation with a d square tr and dq square. Applying the derivation rule, minus 6q plus 15 are the second derivation results. As we know that the q is equal to 1 and q is equal to 4, we determined in the previous slide. The second derivation, minus 6q plus 15, so we are putting this quantity value 1 and 4 in the second derivation function. So the final result is plus 9 and minus 9. So, which quantity assures the maximum profit? The rule of thumb is that if the second derivative is positive, we have a minimum profit. And if the second derivative is negative, we have a maximum profit. This is the rule of thumb because when the profit is maximum that the output declines and marginal cost increases. That's why the minus 9 assures the maximum profit because after which this output that the marginal cost increases. So, at quantity 1, the profit is minimum and at quantity 4, the profit is maximum. Now, we would like to know that what would be the profit if the level of output is 4. So, using the profit function TR minus TC, at quantity 1, we learned that the profit is minimum. At quantity 4, the profit is maximum. What would be the profit at the quantity level of 4? This is the profit function we already derived so by putting the quantity 4 in the profit function we can find the maximum profit so here you can see that this is the profit function and uh, after putting the quantity 4 in the q so the profit is six dollars i hope that you have learned that how to find the profit maximization output using the total revenue and total cost function Let's watch the links given in the description to understand this lecture more 
clearly if you have any questions or comments let me know in the comment section thanks for watching